Live from the Ball State News Center, this is NewsLink Indiana in high definition. Five Ball State students arrested on charges of allegedly breaking into a home last week told police they had a good reason for the offense. Welcome to NewsLink Indiana, I'm Jason Poor. And I'm Tony Sandleben. Thanks for joining us. According to a probable cause affidavit, the students stormed into a home on the 1100 block of West Rex Street to respond to a female friend's report she had been sexually assaulted. The men arrested are between the ages of 21 and 23 years old. They are Marco Contreras, Brandon Kidd, Joshua Hobson, Richard Majors Jr., and Kevin Scudder. They were released after posting a $10,000 bond. Two of the intruders were allegedly stabbed, but have been treated at IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital. Powdered alcohol may not be hitting Indiana store shelves. A state house committee has unanimously advanced a proposal that would ban the product. The powdered form of alcohol, called palcohol, received federal approval earlier this month. Palcohol can be mixed with any liquid to create an alcoholic drink. Supporters of the ban say palcohol would encourage underage drinking and could easily be concealed at school events. But some say banning the product could result in that anyway if other states don't follow suit. Governor Mike Pence is requesting additional funding for the Indiana Department of Child Services. This comes after a study said the Child Welfare Agency was understaffed. Pence is asking the legislator to add $7.5 million per year to the new state budget for new positions. DCS says they need to hire 100 more family case managers and 17 supervisors. And I don't know about 17, Tony, but that 71 degrees on Monday felt pretty nice. Absolutely. Unfortunately, today was not that. Got a lot colder. I think it hit around 30, but Ellen Fritz is here to let us know if maybe that colder weather might be going away. Ellen, give us the good news. Well, I have some good news for sure. It's very spring-like outside for this time of year. Right now it's 43 degrees and starting to get a little cloudy out there, so pretty beautiful for nighttime. Winds are calm and the air is dry, so it's a perfect night to take a walk and it is gorgeous outside. Around the state, temperatures are pretty uniform, 44 in Bloomington, 42 in Indianapolis, all around in the 40s. Headlines to look forward to here in the Weather Show. There are some rain chances, pretty minimal. See how they'll impact your days. And then a beautiful Saturday to kick off the first official day of spring. And a warm up is on the way. Back to you guys. Thanks for that, Ellen. Purdue University President Mitch Daniels has proposed an alternative plan for paying college tuition. In Daniels' plan, students would have the option of finding an investor to finance their degree in exchange for a share of their future income. This plan is supposed to be a substitute for taking out student loans. Daniels is looking for federal legislation in order to put the plan in motion. Daniels testified before a House panel working on a higher education bill. President Ferguson was one of the many to speak at the studio dedication in the Unified Media Lab earlier today. The multi-million dollar project reached completion of the final stage. Newslink reporter Cameron Christian has more. One, two, three, cut are the words that were said right before the ribbon cutting, unveiling the new video and audio studio. Students from student media organizations as well as faculty and staff gathered in the Unified Media Lab to hear those involved in the process of completing the final stage of the Unified Media Lab. Ball State's 15th president, Paul Ferguson, says it represents a great model. I think as a whole it represents one of the greatest models of student-run productions, student-run programs, and an opportunity for them to truly be entrepreneurial learners. The multi-million dollar project gives students the opportunity to work with some of the new equipment. I think the technology available is first rate, state of the art. The space also gives student organizations the opportunity to work with one another to produce great content. Unified Media Online Managing Editor Lauren Chapman says Delaware County will benefit greatly from it. Newslink Indiana and WCRD do broadcast to the Delaware County area. Um, they're actually going to be really affected by the newsroom. They get to see quality content that they wouldn't necessarily get to see. Current Ball State students have the pleasure of working in this amazing space and with it now completed, future Ball State journalism students have something to look forward to. Unified Media Coordinator Julie Metzger says that they want to have a welcoming atmosphere. Students come in here as freshmen and they get a, their first hand look really at what the space is like and they look around and, and they say maybe I want to be a part of that. Newslink, WCRD, and other student media organizations are housed here in the Unified Media Lab. In Muncie, Cameron Christian, Newslink, Indiana. 
Those interested in seeing the Unified Media Lab in which we are recording the show tonight can visit its location on the second floor of the Arts and Journalism building. And order up! Ball State alum and founder of Papa John's Pizza has been named as the speaker at this year's spring commencement. Jeffersonville, Indiana native John Schnatter will be inducted, in, uh, was inducted rather, into the Miller Business College Hall of Fame in 2004. Schnatter opened his first store in his hometown in 1985. Papa John's website says they currently have over 4,000 locations in 34 countries. Commencement is scheduled on May 2nd. Coming up, a Muncie Library program shows kids how reading can be a barking good time. And we'll tell you about a group of women that's overcoming grief in a unique way. Stay tuned. Pretty much good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. From the Ball State News Center, you're watching News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome back. Muncie's Maring Hunt Library is offering special programs to children dedicated to improving their reading skills. Newslink reporter Emmy Risby traveled to the library to see what has these kids so motivated. Programs like Reading to Rover at Maring Hunt Library help children feel more comfortable learning to read. This is Marley. He is a very friendly and silly dog. Very reluctant readers get nervous about reading to adults because they get corrected all the time. So they decided that maybe they could combine reading to something that they love and reading at the same time and maybe actually get them to love to learn how to read. Close, close to. A lot of kids are reluctant to read because they read below their reading level. Think, think. Molly, his has has been been bad bad again. You see how quiet some of them are. Yeah, but they do good. They really do. I think they enjoy it. This dog followed the sm smell of the robber robber to the gas gas station in Muncie Eamon Risby Newslink Indiana the program is offered at the Maring Hunt Library every Tuesday parents must register their children beforehand to schedule a time more than 650 students at Ball State are, are categorized as disabled according to Ball State's website some of those students are trying to raise awareness about disabilities in a unique way. Newslink Indiana's Jalen Washington has more. It's Disability Awareness Month and I'm here at one of the weekly games of wheelchair basketball. Wheelchair basketball is a program that was reintroduced to Ball State four years ago by student Matthew Marshall. I've been playing wheelchair basketball for about seven years now and when I came to Ball State uh, I was told that they didn't have a team going on right now that they had had one in the past but it had been years since anything had been done with it so uh, I still wanted to play I was so I decided to get some people together and see if I could uh, get this recreational league going. Although wheelchair basketball is every week on Tuesdays, Matthew says he's using Disability Awareness Month to reach out and interact with others. Disability culture and awareness is something that you don't actually get a lot of chances in everyday life to both ask about and participate in. So just getting people out here to see what we do in not just wheelchair basketball but all the other activities they do, I think could really help break down some barriers. Marshall believes that it is important that all students learn to step outside of their comfort zone. He also says that understanding the lives of others is easier when experiencing it in some form. One of my favorite things is seeing a person come in here who's 
never played wheelchair basketball come in and say, wow, this was a lot different than I expected it to be, I had a great time. Wheelchair basketball is a program that is open to all students. Marshall says that it is a great way to learn about disabilities in a less exclusive environment and that it also helps those who are disabled get their playtime in. In Muncie, Jayla Washington, Newslink, Indiana. Wheelchair basketball is one of the few activities that will be taking place in the month of March for disability awareness. More information about these events can be found on Ball State's website. One Zumba instructor is using her dance moves to do more than burn calories. Newslink reporter Ashley Lehu traveled to Yorktown to get an inside look on this workout craze. Um, it brings people together. <laughs> Wednesday at 5.30 at Yorktown United Methodist, and then also in the morning on Saturday at 9 a.m. It's fun. You get to enjoy the music and it's a little bit of exercise too. It's not even something like that's like NFL or something that's basically just the US. It's all over the world. There's millions and millions of people are like dancing to some of the same music. Like watching everybody do the exact same moves at the same time, or at least trying to and smiling, laughing. I don't know. There's something about it. You get a group of people together. In Yorktown, Ashley Lehu, Newslink, Indiana. Balderrama promotes Zumba as a way to overcome grief, depression, and loneliness. The tight knit group meets every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at Yorktown United Methodist Church. The first day of spring is almost here. So when will the winter weather, when will the weather officially feel like spring? Your Newslink weather forecast is up next. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees and drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. The Ball State News Center. You're watching Newslink Indiana in high definition. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana and Jason, you know, we've been so used to having this winter weather finally kind of went away at the beginning of the week, but it kind of creeped its way back in this morning. It was pretty cold waking up, but warmed up a little bit in the afternoon for sure. Absolutely. You know, Monday was such a tease. It took me a while to even find my shorts because I haven't used them in so long. Absolutely. But luckily I hadn't put the pants too far away just yet. Ellen, what can we expect to see the rest of the week? Well, we do have some warmth coming up, so prepare for those shorts again, Jason. You're going to need them. But looking outside right now here in Muncie, it's 43 degrees and a little bit cloudy. The clouds are starting to move in. Dew point's 22, so we have some really dry, calm air out there. A beautiful night to get outside for sure. Looking around the state, temperatures are right around in the 40s. 44 there in Bloomington, 42 in Indianapolis. Pretty uniform all around the state. Now looking on radar, you see all of the, all this rain kind of in our area, wondering when that is going to impact us. Tomorrow will not be the issue, but further on in the week, you'll see more of that rain coming in. So tomorrow, it's going to be a sunny start, but clouds are going to start to move in as rain moves in Thursday night. It's going to be a high of 50 and winds east at 11 miles per hour, so pretty calm for the most part, but prepare for those rains, rain showers in the evening. Now looking at precision cast, we'll see what time exactly they'll come through. Looking Thursday around 1 p.m., clouds are going to start creeping into our area, and you see this system inside of Illinois that's going to be affecting us Thursday night. It's going to move through in the early hours of Friday and be almost out of our area by 10 a.m. And then the clouds are going to start fading away leading into a beautiful Saturday. 
So looking at these temperatures from Thursday into Friday, pretty cool and blue over the northern part of the United States and this warmer air to the south. This is something we're used to this time of year as that transition happens from winter to spring. But as you can see, Friday, this big bubble of warm air, that's what we're going to experience on Saturday for the first official day of spring. So as I was saying, the first day of spring, we're going to have a high temperature of 57 degrees. So clear, cut, clear skies, make sure to get outside and enjoy that beautiful weather with that mild wind at only 11 miles per hour. The whole week is going to be a little bit different. We'll see 50s for Thursday and Friday and that gorgeous day for the first day of spring on Saturday. But there is going to be a small cool down as temperatures start to go into the 40s. 45 for a high on Tuesday and that chance of rain comes back again. And then Wednesday, we're going to have a high all the way up to 60 degrees. Well, 60 degrees sounds just perfect. For Absolutely right perfect spring weather. So look forward to that on Wednesday. Absolutely. Coming up in Newslink Sports, we'll have a live update from the Ball State men's volleyball game. And the Ball State baseball and softball teams were in action earlier today. See how they fared against the competition up next. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. From the Ball State News Center, you're watching News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome back to News Link Indiana. I'm Jonathan Chapman. Let's take a look at sports from around the area. Let's start off tonight with Ball State men's volleyball. The team is in action tonight at Worthen Arena as they take on Princeton. News Link's Jackie Grizzali is live at Worthen Arena with more from tonight's matchup. Jackie? Number 14, Ball State, currently taking on unranked Princeton right behind me here. Ball State has the lead in the fourth set, as well as the match. They lead 2 1 in this match. It's been a close affair throughout the night. Ball State took that first set 26 24 for the Princeton Tigers. In that second set, with a 15 25 set win. Now, in the third set, the team traded points very early on. They got to 15 times before Ball State took a five point lead. They went up 17 to 22 late in that third set. They snuck in for the win at 25 22. Now, Ball State wins in this match. It'll be their second win in a row before they get on the road for their next. Jacqueline. Thanks, Jacqueline. And now out at, Ball, at newly renovated Ball Diamond, Ball State baseball team held their second home game of the season. The Cardinals came in today's game with a record of 12-7 and, and winners of their last five. The Cardinals took the field this afternoon to take on Rutgers in the, of the Big Ten looking for their sixth win. Cardinals kept the game close, tied at two apiece until the eighth inning. Then the Cardinals offense erupted for four runs. Sean Kennedy gets it started here, hitting a double that scored one. Then Matt Eppers kept the score going for the Cardinals with a two-run triple to give the Cardinals a 6-2 to two lead. Eppers finished the day two for three with two RBIs. Kennedy also had two RBIs. Starter Trevor Henderson allowed two Rutgers runs in four and two-thirds innings pitch before the bullpen shut the door. Colin Brockhaus tossed three innings of shutout ball as the Cardinals defeated Rutgers 6-2. And right next to Ball Diamond, the Ball State softball team opened their home schedule with a doubleheader against I-69 rival IPFW. The Cardinals season started back in early February as they are now 10-13 on the season as they came into play today. The Cardinals took the field excited to play two. The first game, the Cardinals pitching held IPFW to only two runs throughout the game behind solid starting pitching by Nicole Steinbach, who gave up one run on four hits. On offense, the Cardinals tried to start the, the game on small ball as, si as Lauren Seiler laid down a bunt single. She went on to steal second and third, but could not score. 
The Cardinals then resorted to the power game as Emily Debkowski hit a solo shot for her sixth home run of the season to give the Cardinals their eighth and final run of the game. Ball State took the first game by a score of 8-2. to two. The second game was another strong offensive showing for the Cardinals. The Cardinals had already scored eight runs in the game before they got to the seventh. The Cardinals then erupted for 11 runs on seven hits aided by three IPFW errors. They finished the game besting IPFW 19-4 to, to sweep the doubleheader. Alright guys, and then tomorrow, as we all know, is the start of March Madness, so everybody's brackets will be destroyed after pretty much the first round. Yeah, that'll be interesting for sure. Well, coming up next, soon on Ball State, some billboards are in Indy that have been painted black and are giving some residents satisfaction about a band that might be coming to town. And say goodbye to a certain internet browser. Your entertainment news is next. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. From the Ball State News Center, you're watching News Link Indiana in high definition. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Kayla Harpold with your entertainment news. New billboards are fueling rumors about the Rolling Stones coming to Indianapolis this year. The billboards located by the state fairgrounds read many different lyrics and one simply states Thursday. It is assumed that there will be an announcement Thursday regarding this issue. If rumors are true, there will be the Rolling Stones first time playing in Indianapolis in 21 years where they last performed at the RCA Dome in 1994. It is believed that the group has not returned because their last concert was not sold out. Microsoft is finally getting rid of Internet Explorer. According to tech news site The Verge, Chris Capicella, the chief marketing officer of Microsoft, announced the decision at the Microsoft Convergence Conference earlier this week. Internet Explorer will still exist in some manner in Windows 10, but Microsoft is planning on renaming the brand and the browser. They're currently referring to the new browser under the name Project Spartan, and Microsoft has the hopes of redeeming themselves from the negative effects that Internet Explorer 6 had. The Rodgers and Hammerstein 1965 film, The Sound of Music, is celebrating their 50th year anniversary. 20th Century Fox, to celebrate, is releasing a five-disc Blu-ray DVD collection and re-releasing the soundtrack. The film will be played at the TCM Classic Film Festival in Hollywood later this month, and also will be played at over 500 theaters in April. Also to celebrate the anniversary, four new books about the film are being published, and a 2020 special episode led by Diane Sawyer will be aired tonight at 10 p.m. on ABC. And that's all for your entertainment news. Thanks for that, Kayla. Ellen, can we get one last quick look at weather? Absolutely. With spring, is the first official day is on Saturday. It's bringing in spring-like weather with a high of 57, a cool down into later into the week, and then warming back up to a high of 60 on Wednesday. All right, and that's all for tonight. For Newslink Indiana, tune in tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Cardinal Vision. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and like us on Twitter. Have a good night. Whatever, whatever the social media says.